Welcome to East Atlanta Church, where ministry is made simple by Pastor John L. Ward. What we're doing or getting for people and how we look. And we get caught up in tradition and ritualism. And we forget the main thing of what Christ taught us. And that sacrifice. Out of everything that we will, we will deal with, we will realize that the greatest thing that God showed us was sacrifice. It said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He sacrificed. He gave what he did not have to give, but he gave anyway. Amen. Christ sacrificed. So this morning, I promise I'm, I'm going to make this quick, but turn with me if you could to Luke 10, 25. We're going to deal with the scripture that we're very familiar with, but I want you to see it through someone else's eyes. We know this story so very well, so clear. And we've even put ourselves as a good Samaritan in our heart to make ourselves feel good. But what we fail to realize is sometimes there's another way of seeing things. And it reads, And behold, a certain ruler stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And the answer said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right. right. See, here's the thing. We know what the Bible says. That's right. Now, 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 now this message is for you church goers. See, see, this ain't for the folk that's out there that you talking about. This is y'all. So I look right now and say, this is for me. So don't go looking at your neighbor. Don't go texting somebody saying, hey, you need to hear this. This is why you need to be in church. No, it's not for them. It's for you. Because see, here's a lawyer. Here's a, here's a person who was scripturally astute. You know, have you ever met people that sometimes what happens is they know the Bible so well they're ready to argue with you about it and challenge you with it and they ask certain things of you because they want to be challenging and confrontational but they don't, it, it, in other words it's called Socratic, it's a Socratic method okay and the Socratic method is a legal way a legal method of, what's, of answering a question with a question to challenge you to therefore defer what they really want to know. They want, the gentleman wants to put himself in an avenue of being right. Now how many of us know people like that? We're going to answer a question and keep putting us in the, changing the narrative of the story so therefore we will always be right. Church folk are good at that. Pastors, we real good at that. Amen. amen. I'm just, amen. you can amen. Amen. I heard say out. Y'all don't take the truth. That's right. So here's a person who was a, who was astute in the world. And then he said, Jesus, and Jesus answered a certain man. It was so funny. The guy then says to himself, he says, Willie, he says, thou hast answered this, answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. He says, but he willing to justify himself. Now listen to this. It says, but he willing to justify himself. Why do you have to justify yourself when you already know who you are in Christ? I want you to think about that. Why do you have to justify yourself when you already know who you are in Christ? Why are you arguing with people if you already know who you are. See, with the point I read, the problem that the guy had when he came to Jesus with the Lamb's Book of Life, he was worried about what his, where his name was. 
But when you know you're living for Christ, you're not worried about what your name is. You just waited on him to go ahead and say, it, see, it's like having good credit. When you got good credit, you go to the car lot, you're not worried about the credit manager, are you? When you got money down, you're not worried about that. You're there to buy your car. You're not there to worry about what the credit manager says. But see, many of us live our spiritual lives the way we live our physical lives, worried about how our credit history looks. So what we have here is this gentleman who is trying to justify trying to justify his, watch this, not his knowledge, not his words, but his actions. See, we know the word of God, but our actions and our words don't always line up. I knew I wasn't going to get amen on that. We don't always practice what we preach. And this is what this scripture was dealing with. So he says to him, he asks Jesus, Jesus, he says, who is my neighbor? Because, of course, you're nice to your family members, the people you like. We're good to people who are good to us. And those are the people we deem as neighbors to us. Those are the people we deem as friends. But Christ came into the world with people who did not deem him as a friend. To save a people that did not want him as a friend. But yet he died for them anyway. So we come here in the scripture that says this. It says, I love Jesus what he did. He says, but he says, but he willing to justify himself said to Jesus, who is your neighbor? And it says that Jesus answered, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves. Now understand, from if, if you know anything about the, about the land, the, the geographical area of Jerusalem and Jericho, you'll realize it says he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. But actually he went up. But the thing is, the city is so far below on sea level. And the thing is, Jerusalem is a place of God, is a place of holiness, but Jericho is a place of Palestine. See, what we got to understand here, let's stop looking at this story from the person that just left and was traveling, even though it was about 18 miles in the travel, and it was known that on this path that there were murderers, marauders, and thieves that would kill people, that it was actually called the red or the blood because of the fact that people would die on this journey, but and they placed the end there because of these things that would happen, but I want you to move outside of the physical and look into the spiritual. There was a certain man that came from where he was supposed to be to where he had no business going. Amen. There was a certain man that was with God and then began to travel down to a dark, desolate place that had no God. There was a certain person that was walking with God and then began to find his walk, even though it looked like it was elevated to the world, it was actually a descent spiritually. Can anybody relate to that? Come on. So this young, this man, this person, this particular person, certainly is a synonymous with particular. That means there's something special about them. So you have to ask yourself, what is particular about this person? The thing is, the particular particularity about this person is the fact the person is you and I. The person is someone you know. And it says this certain person went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, fell among thieves, fell among people that he knew he was not supposed to be with, got into the wrong crowd, began to deal with people that thought that they were with him but they were taken from him, got around people that were stealing from him, got around people that degraded him, belabored him, beat him down. This is what it took. They got around people who stole him from his identity and stole him of everything that covered him. It said, look, stripped him of his raiment, which means that it stripped him of his covering. See, when you leave from God and you go down, people will rob you of your covering. That's what Satan wants to do. He wants to rob you of everything God has for you. All right. Amen. But here's the here's amazing part. He said he was wounded. And they departed, leaving him half dead. How many of you ever felt wounded? 
you've been through a battle, you were in a place you know you needed not to be in. And people began to take away your covering. The enemy came after you. And you just wish that he would have left you dead. I don't know about you, but I've been in some situations where sometimes it was so bad, I wish he just would have took me out of here than let me live through it. I know some of y'all, y'all y'all more spiritual and holy than me. Y'all ain't never had that kind of experience in life. It's okay, it's okay. I, I, I want to be like you one day. But I've been in some situations where Satan beat me up so bad that I was just like, God, can't come on, let, I'm done. All right. I would rather just check out right now than keep going through this. Because the healing process is going to be hellacious in itself. Sometimes healing hurts more than what was done to you. So this young man was going through all of this. And he said, and by chance there came a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed on the other side. Mm. Wow, a certain priest. And see, so understand, the thief is like life. It's philosophy. Uh -huh. It's knowledge. Because see, you see, every, how many people, everybody talk about they woke, right? Y'all heard that phrase before? Well, my young people, I know y'all heard it. Everybody being woke. Yeah, everybody knows about that. Everybody's supposed to be woke. Uh -huh. Let me tell you something. Get caught up in this philosophy of being woke if you want to. You're going to find yourself dead. Amen. Lost, confused. Because that's what the thief does. It tries to bombard you with so much philosophy and information that you lose spirituality of your covering. Well, all right. All right. Now see, we got the priest that comes, and what he is doing, he's he's representing the 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 religiosity. Okay? And what does he do? He do like church folk do. See, you good for going downtown and feeding the homeless uh -huh. and getting mad with the mayor because you can't feed them downtown no more. Uh -huh. But when it comes to really helping someone and sacrificing, mm. oh, you're going to avoid them like the plague. Mm. You know you know somebody just got evicted or they're about to get evicted and it's Christmas time? How many of y'all would actually stop buying Christmas gifts and help that person keep their home? Mm. All right. Amen. As a matter of fact, most people would rather give you a gift than give you money to help you stay in your house. Lord Jesus. Am I lying? See, that's what going to the other side looks like. Because see, you know it's going to cost to walk. See, he, the thing is, he didn't even have enough love in his heart. Or he, he didn't even have enough, let's say character to even be real with the person that woke up to him and say, I see you hurting, but I'm not going to do nothing. All right. He acted like he couldn't see them. You know how y'all do? Y'all act like pastor can't see you when you sit in the back and everything else. <laughs> you, you know how it is. You know, I was at one church when you act like you're writing a check that you know what's going to clear. I'm just saying. But y'all don't do that here. I know that. But we do things to, to try to act like we're avoiding. So it will look to justify ourselves when we ever get cold. Well, I didn't see it. It wasn't me. Then it says, yeah, then the Levite came through. Yeah. Now the Levite comes in, this is a tribe. This is somebody who knows. These are the first priests. These are the cold, anointed ones by God. And it says, he went to the other side. Also. When you see someone that's down and hurting, and you go to the other side, you don't want to take out time out of your schedule. What are you doing? The other day, that was about a couple of weeks ago, I was driving, and I do a little part-time meet for Uber. And um, as I was driving, I saw somebody on 25 at Lakewood Fruit 75, uh, Lakewood Fruit 166. 
and I was going south. So you know, if you, and they were right there after the Big Hill exit, but before the Lakewood Freeway exit. So I had to pass them, get off, go all the way back around, but to catch up to them, you had to go back, loop around, come back, go down the Cascade, come right back up. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm gonna be honest with you. Is that not out the way? And I didn't notice, I saw a guy straight on the side of the road, car messed up, I didn't know him. Now I'm not saying this for accolades, but I'm saying this to show you something. All while I passed him, my flesh said, you're justified to keep going because you passed him, man. Alright. It's gonna take you, but watch this justification that I, that, I, that I reasoned with. And help me, tell me if I'm wrong, Pastor, I mean, by the time I get off at 166, wrap around, get off at mid at Greenbrier, you know how that light is, making that left. Then I gotta make another light, make that left. Then I gotta make another left. Then I gotta get back on 166. Then I gotta go all the way down the Cascade. Then I gotta wait at that light to make a left. Then I gotta wait at another light to make a left. And then I gotta get back on the expressway. By that time, somebody else said I already helped you. I'm wasting gas. I ain't got that kind of gas. If I had it like that, I wouldn't be part-time with Uber. Okay, all right. I mean, I'm just being real. So I was justifying it. Uh-huh. Like this priest was. To go the other way. But yet God said, what did I tell you to do? So I turned around, I went back, and then I had another justification moment. When I pulled up, the tow truck was there. Won't he do it? <laughs> he did. That, 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 he didn't do it. I had, I, I, just, I had to stop. How many of y'all would have stopped when you saw the tow truck there? Y'all, how many would have kept going? When you saw the tow truck there, you would have kept on going. He good in there, right? God, thank God you was just testing my obedience. Thank you, Father. Because I really don't, I really had the time to stop and help this brother. I don't know what was going on. His car broke down. I can't fix him. I don't even know him. God said, what did I tell you to do? Then I say, God, these 18 wheelers coming, I can't get out the car. They're going to tell my car door. What did I tell you to do? Get out the car. I got out the car. When I got out the car, the tow truck driver was getting in the truck. And I said, hi, hey, sir, is everything okay? He said, the tow truck driver told me he was going to charge me $80, but he got here and was charging me $140, and I can't afford it. So he's leaving, man. I said, so what are you going to do? He says, I don't know. He said, my car was driving and then all of a sudden I heard a shaking and a noise and my tire went out, everything went off my front fender and I was going towards the wall, I was going about 80 miles an hour. I, he said, I don't know how I got from the left side to the right side. I said, do you believe in God? He says, yeah, I believe in God. I said, no, but do you believe in him? I didn't say do you believe of him. Uh, most people believe of God. They know there's God. But they don't believe in Him. Which means it's Him working in your life. Amen. So he said, um, I said, how can I help you? He says, well, I need to get to this, to this um, mechanic shop in Douglasville. See? <laughs> you I, I was on the way to camp. <laughs> Once again, I should have just went to the other side. <laughs> Without hesitation, I said, sir, get your stuff, let's go. Amen. Had a chance to talk to him on the way. I can't share with what, what I share with him. But he got there. He says, I don't understand. He said, I don't know you. Why would you do this? He said, why would you drive me all the way over here? Now his wife was waiting at the shop at the shop for him. And when I saw her face, she started crying because she was she was so worried that she had lost her husband by everything that she knew that transpired. She couldn't imagine how he made it. She couldn't imagine what was going on with him. Anything like that. His phone had died. It was everything. But God made me realize, he says, listen. You don't understand what that family was going to be going through because they couldn't contact one another. Come on, man. He says, now what happens after that? That's none of your business. Amen. Amen. Says, but you do what I tell you to do from now on. Amen. Lord Jesus. 
So my question is, when you look at the story of the Good Samaritan, growing up, everybody, you remember growing up, you used to hear about Good Samaritans, and say, I'm a Good Samaritan, you, for the Sunday school, didn't give us a Good Samaritan award. I want you to understand, a Samaritan was not somebody you wanted to be. Right. Okay? They were not the ones that you, you idolized. They were, they, they, yes, they, they, they were the, the, they were not the socialites. They were the ones, they were the ones that were outcast. They, they were the ones that you would say didn't believe. In other words, they heathens. Y'all church folk will call them heathens because they didn't act the way you do, they didn't talk the way you do, they didn't worship the way you do. But the funny thing about a Samaritan, though, they believed in God. Amen. They knew about the prophecy. So, what we have to, remember I said this message for you? Those people out there that are talking about God but they're not going to church. And you're just looking at the way they live, the way they dress, their lifestyle, what they smoke, what they drink, how they talk. And you're saying that they're wayward and they're not of God and God don't love them. See, you don't know what's going on with them. They know that, I'm going to be honest with you, they may have a better relationship than you got on your ritualistic system. Your religion can't measure up to their relations. Because see, I remember, like I told you, there was a Samaritan woman at the well that God, that Jesus came to. And she, remember, she had husbands. Okay then, okay then. And somebody else. Alright but yet Christ used her. But it says this Samaritan came and he, he healed him, he aided the man, he took him to the end, but he didn't just do that. He took him, he paid for his way, he says, listen, when I come to Jesus, whatever this guy incurs, I'm going to cover him. He says, whatever it is, I'm going to cover it. So here's what we got to understand. We first got to stop, we got to get out of our comfort zone. See, one person represented comfort, the other person represented convenience. One, we as believers only want to do work if it's comfortable to us. What do you mean by comfortable, Pastor? I do a lot of things that's not comfortable for me. No, but it makes you feel good, and that's the comfort I'm talking about. Right, right. See, me driving that guy all the way to Douglasville did not make me feel good. Okay, then. Didn't make my gas tank feel good. Didn't make my time feel good. But it was obedience to God. And I'm going to be true to you. Being obedient to God ain't going to always feel good. Sometimes that's the most uncomfortable feeling in the world. So if you're trying to get a feel good feeling. And if you're looking for a church that's going to make you feel good, or you, you, you say, well, you know, I go to New Morning Light, but the problem is I just don't feel good. Maybe that's the reason why you need to be here. Amen. You keep looking for something that's going to make you feel good. So you know what we do with feel good? We stay in our bed. You know how, you know how your bed is. How did bed, how did your bed felt good this morning? <laughs> felt it was cold outside? It felt good to stay in that bed, didn't it? Yes, yeah, see, feel good don't work. Feel good relationships don't work. Yeah, I know that's a, that's some y'all like, what? What you mean? Yeah. See, because you can't grow in comfort. The other thing is convenience. We the end of we serve out of convenience. I'm gonna give to the point that it doesn't deflect and hurt me. I'm going to give and I'm going to serve to the point that it's comfortable for me. I'm going to give to the point that I don't see where I got to really sacrifice anything. That's how the Levite was. He's like, I, I could do, but I'm only going to do it to a level. You don't want me to give and not do it and not have anything for myself, do you? Well, Christ gave. He gave, he gave so much, he gave his life. And you talking about you have a hard time giving some money? You have a tough time giving some time? And I'm not talking about money here all the time, but see, money is what we value so much. Amen. So I don't want any people that's busy saying, well, he just didn't know. It's just that that's what we value so much. We value that more than family. You know? And we all have areas to grow with that. But then you gotta, we got to move out of convenience. 
and I'm guilty of it. I don't help you move out of convenience. I will not help. I, I, my problem, if you ever got to move, don't ask me. I have a running saying, I will pay for your moving truck before I help you move. I'm not the person to help you move. I'm not a good mover. You know, you can ask my wife. We have very bad, very bad discussions, conversations where we have to move and nobody's moving for us. It doesn't end well. So I would, I'd rather just pay to keep peace. You understand what I'm saying? But I have to work on that myself. But the other thing we have to do is we have to learn from this message. Is this. We got to stop trying to avoid kingdom work. Okay? We spend more time avoiding kingdom work than doing the work itself. You know that there's stuff to be done. You know that there's, there's work to be done in the ministry. We'll find more things to make excuses about why we're not doing it. We'll, we'll create a job not to do the job in the church. We'll find everything in the world to do. Just, oh, I will go to church today, but I'm just not feeling well and I'm sick. Y'all would rather be sick than come to church with a healing than me. I'm going to tell you something. I have been sick. I, I, that's what, I, I had a sinus infection for this past month. I've been sick. But you know the one thing that made me feel good? Come on, come on. When it came to ministering and when it came to reaching people for the kingdom of God. I had people say, I thought you were sick. I am, but see, it ain't me right now. That's God. I, I need God, the end of God all the time to help me deal with this sickness. That's right. There was a message in there. That's right. Because when he indwells in you, that sickness that you have is gone. That's right. So I, 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 we look at that. We have to look at it. We have to sit back and we have to say, okay, I got to stop avoiding the world. And then what the other thing is, we have to do follow-up. We have to look beyond just doing, but do the follow-up. I make it a key now. Anybody I help, anybody who God puts in my life to serve. Anybody ever know anybody who died recently? Yeah, anybody, any friends that died? Anybody that died in October that you know? Have you called a family today? Have you called them last week? It's amazing. I don't call people. If you, if you ever know me, you lose a family member, don't expect a call from me when everybody else is calling. That's right. I will probably call you the day after the funeral. Right. Home one service, I have one name to caught up in those titles. Then I'll probably call you a week after that. And then I'll call you a month after that. Because, see, people will do things that's, it makes them feel good to call you and say, oh, I'm praying for you. I'm sorry for being lost. That's what everybody does. Yeah. Right. But if you have lost somebody, uh, that week afterwards, is the worst. you don't hear from nobody. Jesus. None whatsoever. That month afterward, you don't hear from nobody. Holidays, you don't hear from nobody. They, it's like they forgot about you. Why? Because they're on to the next thing. They did what they had to do to make them feel good. Right. If I'm talking about you, then you need to check yourself. Yeah. Right. Amen. All right. That's right. I make it a purpose to call people. Like today, today is my day. When I leave, I'll be calling some people because I've done a lot of funerals this year, unfortunately. I've had to deal with a lot of deaths this year, unfortunately. A lot of tragedies this year, unfortunately. But you know what? Out of all of them, I know those people are going through it today. Mm -hmm. See, y'all think it's going to be tomorrow. No, it's a day because they're scared of tomorrow. That's right. Tomorrow, they, tomorrow is the day they don't want to face. Why don't you call them today? <coughs> call them today. Don't call them tomorrow when you got your family in the background. Right. You, you understand what I'm saying? Call them today. I mean, like, what kind of message is this, Pastor? But this message is about being the good servant. Yeah. See, we talk about doing things but we don't have real application. I'm trying to help you get application. How do you make this happen? Now, I'm, I'm being honest. Today is what I'm going to do. Even though today is not the day I want to call anybody. Today is the day I want to watch my birds rise. I'm being real. <laughs> but you know what? 
And I'm honestly, because I got I know the work God has me do, I probably won't even catch the game. And you all know I love them. And I don't like that other people, the people they play. It's okay. So I'm, that, that's a watch this. I'm operating away from my comfort and convenience. <laughs> I'm so operating out of comfort and convenience right now. I don't know if any of my Facebook friends, I'm on Facebook until the first of the year. Can you imagine me not being able to tweet, post nothing for two weeks? This is hard for me. But God said, you got to get out of your comfort zone. You got to stop operating in your convenient area. You got to stop going around the other side and go straight where I told you to go. It was a joke that said that the reason the priest went around the other side because he realized that he had already been robbed. <laughs> Y'all weren't supposed to laugh at that. <laughs> but um, in all honesty, we go through life and we try to be and we want to be better than who we are. But the problem is we can't be better than who we are by just saying it. We can only be better than who we are, but by doing it. Now ask yourself, what are you willing to give? What are you willing to sacrifice? Who are you? Are you the priest? Are you the Levite? Or are you the Samaritan? I can't answer that for you. But what I can say is this. Is that when I walk, when I walk down that road. Watch this. When I walk up that road. To Jerusalem. Down to Jericho. Huh? I'm sure you're about to correct your name. Come on, correct. And I got beat by the world. I was grateful that Christ came. I was grateful because I saw the church lead me, lead me on one side. And I saw the world and the law lead me on another side. And the only person that came was mercy and grace. I'm grateful for that person named Shirley that brings mercy and grace. Because I was there and left for dead. But Christ said he loved me so much that he says, I'm not just going to nurse you to aid. I'm not just going to take you to get better. But I'm going to pay for you. That's right. He said, I'm going to give unto you and pay a debt, watch this he says, I'm going to pay a debt you haven't incurred and then pay what you overdraft amen, I love it that's what Samaritan did that's what Christ did but there's something that had to transpire he had to get up he had to accept the hand of Christ. He had to walk with him. He had to trust in him. See, how many people would have trusted in another stranger, albeit a Samaritan, after you just got beat up by some robbers? Some of y'all can't even trust yourself anymore. That's when you're still laying there. You got to, you, every time Christ comes in your life, he's going to tell you to do something. Take up this bed and walk. Stand. See. Watch. Talk. Jump. You ever, you ever seen a miracle that happened that he didn't ask the person to do something? It didn't happen. Every time there was something, if the person couldn't do it, somebody around them did. Mm -hmm. Raise the roof. Yeah. Believe. 
Go home and they'll be healed. Every single thing, the person that was looking for it, that needed God to move, had to do something. My question to you is, when are you going to move and do something so Christ can move in your life? Stop just lying there. He's giving you his hand. He's saying, I'm here for you. I'm going to cover you. I'm going to pay for you. I'm going to aid you. I'm going to restore you. But you got to accept me. We're here at Christmas Eve, and everybody's talking about the greatest gift. And for those that are watching, we're not getting caught up in all this, well, this wasn't the time that it happened, that we're not doing all that. I'm not getting caught up in that. I got people mad at me already. Listen, I don't care if you celebrated March 31st or June or, or February 32nd, as long as you celebrate the fact that he came, yeah, I said the 32nd intentionally, because as long as you celebrate that he came into this world for our sins, that's all that matters. I mean, it's funny because we get caught up in that, but our ancestors, some of y'all got grandparents who don't even know their real birthday. Because mm -hmm. the Bible missed it that they wrote it in. Amen. But you want to make a big deal off of, one, off, off of a date. We ain't celebrating the date. We're celebrating the date. We're, so, we're, we're here to celebrate the fact that God loved us so much that he said, oh, you wretched soul, I realize you can't keep my commandment. I realize that you're not worthy, but I love you so much, I want to give you another chance. Yes, yes. That's what we celebrate. So if you have any questions, if you got any doubts about why we're here, and when people challenge you, tell them that. We're celebrating Christ. We're celebrating the anointed one in his anointing, the Christos. Okay, understand. That's who we celebrate. The Son of God. But what good is to celebrate the Son of God if you won't accept him? The doors of the church are open. If you know you've been living like a Levite and go on the other side, let's pray. Come on down. If you know you've been living like a priest, go on to the other side. Let's pray. Let's get and come on down. Stop, stop playing. I try to be transparent. Because I don't want you to ever feel bad about who you are in this decision you Sometimes being transparent can be dangerous. I've been warned about that. But I realize I'm not even perfect. Amen. And every day I need him. Every day. Yes. Every day. And I promise you. I'm willing to bet dollars and dollars. There's seven days in a week. Yes. And I think seven out of seven days, I get it wrong. Right. Throughout the days. Now, maybe y'all good. Y'all get it right. But y'all get it right six out of seven. I, I can go throughout seven days. and I'm, I just try to deal with an hour. Can I get it right for an hour? Yes. And I mean, that means in my thoughts and my actions. So that's why I'm not here to judge you. But people say, why is it you preachers put so much on salvation? Because see, here's the thing. We know the hell we went through this week. Come on, come on. We know the challenges we went through this week. All right. We know the failures we had this week. Yes. And my God, if I had some, I know y'all had to have some. Amen. 
So, but the thing is, we don't ever want to not have you give the opportunity to get it right again. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. If you mess something up, don't you want to make it up and get it right? Yeah. How many of y'all wish y'all just hit reset on your prayer? That's what God, that's why we do this. We want to give you a reset button. I had a prayer this week. And if you all want this prayer, if you all want to stand with me in this prayer, I'm going to ask you to come down. And we're going to pray. My prayer was, God, some of you may say, well, that's, you can't ask that. But I said, God, I know you say we can reap what we sow. But I'm asking you, can I get a reprieve from the seeds that I've sown and not have that harvest of negativity that I've sown this year? God, I'm, 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 I'm willing to sacrifice. See, God can't bless that which is cursed. But I'm willing to sacrifice the harvest of the good seeds if I don't have to reap the harvest of the bad. See, some of y'all, y'all, y'all too good. Y'all ain't got, y'all ain't selling the bad seeds, so I know that ain't for you. But I'm asking you, if that's you, and you realize that this past year, you don't sow some stuff, you don't want to get reaped, you don't want to reap from. I'm asking you to come down here and pray with me right now. Amen. Lord. Amen. See, you know who you are, and to be honest with you, it's a lot. But I know you don't want nobody in your business and you don't want people looking at you. But you know what? The, watch this. The very people that's going to judge you are the very ones that's going through and worshiping you. People judge. Watch this. People judge out of hurt. You ever judge? When you got a loving heart, you, you, you're compassionate with people when they fall short, aren't you? you you like, they, well, you know he robbed the bank. Yeah, I know he robbed the bank. But you know what? Look. He wanted his right mind. We gonna pray for him anyway. That's why we go to prison. Isn't that why we do prison work? Because we realize. Yes. So I know I have done some things not in my right mind. But I love it. Come on closer. Come on closer. But I love it when, when the Bible says he came to himself. If you're if you're ready to have a come to yourself moment right now, come down. I have said some things about some people. He forgives you. He forgives you. He forgives you. I don't cuss folk out of my mind. Some of y'all don't cuss folk out really. And watch this. And you justify it too. Come on. <laughs> Come on. You done lie. You done cheat. Lord Jesus. But you don't want God, God, you don't want to reap the harvest of that, do you? That's right. Amen. I know I don't. So we don't pray. If everybody else just standing, if, if you're not down, just stand and pray with them. Pray for them. 